Hi guys, I'm Bobsy, and in this video I'm going to go over the transport layers in Pernat. Now, one of the things that's very important to mention is for the transport layers, I would always go to our documentation, which is pernat.gitbook.io, and then head to the systems modules, network manager, and transports. Here you'll essentially find the list of all our transports, and we'll of course have each of them described in this section, individual section. But of course, this video will go over all of the ones that we have at the time of recording, but there might be more added in the future, so I would say always go and check this in case you're looking for something else. Now, going into Unity here, and we already have Pernet set up, and this is essentially the testing setup I've used for other videos as well. The first transport that you'll always start with when you add the network manager is the UDP transport. The UDP transport is really the most modern and normal protocol to connect directly to a server right so in this case we're, we're connecting to the local host but in a lot of cases this is also where you'd have your server address and your server port and you'll essentially be able to connect uh, directly to for example a dedicated server now there's a lot of other setups but the UDP setup is very simple and very easy to work with and if we just go here and look let's go through them one by one really so UDP transport is also the one that will work on pretty much any platform uh, except for web and that's where the next one comes in which is the web transport of Pernet. Going down to the web transport here this is a little bit different and again setup that also depends on the setup that you have in terms of your server but essentially it's going to be very similar to UDP to use and if you want to build for WebGL you essentially just use the web transport rather than the UDP transport and again you add your address and for that sake if you need custom uh, web specifications to connect to this is also where you add them or if you want to connect through SSL with SSL protocols, you can also do that very easily here. So if you're familiar with web already, this should all make sense too. Now moving on to the next one is the local transport. The local transport is exactly as you'd expect. It's essentially just a fully local representation. So what it does is essentially emulates the network so that all your network code will still work, but you're not actually connected to the network and you're not actually spinning up a server properly. You are acting as your own server locally, but again, nothing else is really going on. The next one that we have and I want to go into is just the parent transport. Now this one's a little bit different and by default when you use it, this little pop-up will also be here. This is because Pernet actually includes a completely free relay to use and the per transport is our relaying transport essentially and you can self-host this. Now the master server that already comes in here, which is directly from the per balancer, is essentially only meant for development use and that's what this box says is as long as this is the address you use it'll tell you that it, this is development purpose only because we're paying for that out of pocket so it's essentially just to help you and your development but if you do want to go to production with this one you do have to set up your own relaying server and our relaying server is fully open so you can go look at the code copy that and make it your own um, but essentially it just works with feeding it a room name and as long as that room name across two computers match then they will connect so for example per net rules like this and if i now build this send it to a friend of course you use this as our transport i now build it i send it to someone else we should and we both connect to per net rules well then it will work and the host is the one deciphering the region it has the ability to find the best region and you can also choose any of the regions here cool now the next transport in line is the steam transport and this is where uh, I'll also be talking a little bit about another tool, but essentially the Steam transport allows you obviously to connect through Steam. The client address here will very typically be the C or it will be the C Steam ID, which you want to connect to. You're gonna of course change whether it's peer to peer. We have it on by default because that's the case most use it for because Steam has completely free relaying, but you can also set up a dedicated Steam server and connect to that instead, which is a bit more of an advanced setup. Now, in order to use Steam transport, you do have to be initialized with Steam. And this is where Steamworks Heathens comes in. So this video is sponsored or this section of the video is sponsored by heathens but before you click away it's very important for me to mention that it's also my personal go-to tool for steam integrations in my own production games as well so the complete kit that they do have is around 80 to 100 bucks on the asset store but that being said you can get it for just 15 dollars now this is a sponsorship for 15 dollars however you're completely free to keep it all after just paying for a month so you could just pay for the 15 dollars and then essentially revoke your membership, download their tool, and you're still completely free to use it production use wise as well. And that being said, I will also just give them kudos from me. They have really good support. They've been around for over 10 years, so I don't think they're exactly going anywhere. And I don't think you're at a risk going with heathens. I've always really liked it. I think of course, always look into this stuff yourself, but I can definitely condone that they're doing good work over there. Now onto the very last one that we have, which is the composite transport. The composite transport is essentially the transport that allows you to combine transport layers. Essentially, you will plug and play your transport layers into here. Let's say that you wanted to work with the UDP transport and also you wanted to work with the web transport. Now, when you do start up, both of them will spin up and 
when you essentially start up from the composite transport. If I do like this, for example, and I go and hit play, both of them will spin up. So you can see if we look at the UDP transport, they're now listening and connected. And if we look at the web transport, you can see this one is now just listening because we only need to be connected through one and it'll essentially prioritize the top one. There's also a little tick here, which can ensure essentially that all servers start. This would be, for example, in this case where I'm not initialized with Steam. If I put this in here and I just hit play, it'll still work. We'll still connect. You know, the Steam Relay will say, oh, this, sorry, this Steam setup will say that, well, we're not initialized, but we're still connected properly. But you can see now if I go and say ensure all servers start, uh, ensure, uh, essentially, you can now see the composite transport is now continuously listening. I will never actually be confirmed fully connected because it's essentially waiting for the Steam one to work, which is why it's off by default. I like it just starting up whichever that it can start up and then running from there. But it essentially allows you to run multiple layers, which can also make it, for example, very cross-platform viable. But it's also a good use case for, you know, let's say that you're releasing on Steam, you're releasing on Epic Games and so on and so forth. You could essentially put everything in that you need here or a dedicated server or whatnot. You can put everything in that you need here, have it spin up as need to be, and it should really just work from there. So I hope this quick little overview gives you a good idea of how to work with the transport layers of Burnout. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below and remember to also join the Discord server. We're trying to be very active over there and we already have a very awesome, very active community, which is great to see. And I hope to see you over there. So other than that, I just hope that you have a wonderful day.